Okay. January 31st, 2024. That's not today's date, but that is the date that I got this information because I'm recording pretty late. So the last update on my fibroids was that the surgery was stopped because of um, scar tissue and they needed more, they just needed to do more things. They needed two surgeons in the room, a complex pelvic surgeon, um, as well as my gynecological surgeon. Since then, <laughs> it has been a whole year, um, but originally I had gotten a new job and then had the skirt surgery scheduled and I was supposed to be starting my new job after my recovery. Um, so some things have changed financially, which is great. Yay. Um, and also I'm grateful that folks have helped so much with this throughout this whole multi-year process. Even before I started doing this, it had been what, five or six years since I was dealing with fibroids. Um, so let's get to the medical updates. I have an implant for birth control. So the issue with anemia and extreme blood loss that I was having before is not an issue anymore. Um, I'm past the iron infusions. So all of that's really exciting. And I didn't want an implant, but that's what I ended up going with because of our healthcare system. Um, but it has, it has been getting me through. The difference between Explanon and um, what I was doing before, which was hormone blockers, uh, I'm forgetting the name of that, is that the hormone blockers were actually shrinking my fibroids. And it was obviously a temporary fix. Like there's not something that would have been covering me long term. And it also um, has not a great effect on the bones. So it depletes the bones of calcium. So, you know, not a great thing, but it, oof, my body felt great on it, but not a great thing. Um, so with that being said, it's not tricking my fibroids. I'm still walking around with a pregnant belly. I know it's there. I can feel it. I can see it. My clothes tell me because I can only wear certain things. So yeah, the medical updates are that. Um, I am on Nexplanon. I'm not worrying about the anemia issues currently um, or like blood loss or any of, any of that kind of stuff. So that's great. I am still dealing with all of the other symptoms that come with having an expanded uterus. Use your imagination, pregnant people, use your imagination. Like, it's not great, it's not fun. Um, there's a lot of fatigue also. This is where we are with the date. On January 31st of this year, I finally reached out to one of the surgeons that my previous surgeon that I did like recommended me to. Work has taken over my life, so I was not able to do that well enough before. But I was finally able to do that and got a consultation with him, did the whole, um, the ultrasound, the probing ultrasound, um, did one of those. He counted so many fibroids. They have grown a couple of them since then. So I'm at, I think, five months. My uterus is the size of a five month pregnancy. But at the end of it all, he did tell me <laughs> that he can do he can do the surgery he can do it laparoscopically i'm recording this months later but i'm about to cry um that he can do it laparoscopically and just as a side like i haven't been talking about all of my medical issues just like i just don't think that's a safe thing to do on the internet um but for the sake of people who might be watching this later and might be going through a lot of similar things, I'm going to include it in this. Also knowing that I'm not dropping this until after the surgery is done and successful, but I have an umbilical hernia that didn't show up until what, 10, not even 10, maybe like eight years ago. So it's new to my body. But right now, <laughs> January 31st is when I found out that my surgeon said, yes, babes, we can do it. And we're going to do it laparoscopically. 
this is a possibility even though the fibroids are bigger even though you have a five month size pregnancy size uterus we got you so at this point um we we're just waiting on an mri to really see what's going on in there and then um waiting And then waiting to schedule where both surgeons are available on the same day and we can finally be done with this. So of course I left the office and I got on the phone with my brother who's an EMT. Um, I, and I've been just sharing a lot with just because of like medical details or whatever. And and of course I cried <laughs> in my car before I got back on the road to drive back home to work from home. Um, and I talked to my mom later in the day, but yeah, so it's happening fucking for real. Yeah. I hope I can say fuck it on YouTube because that's where this is going. All right.